heard that music driving down, I'm like, that sounds really distorted. What is the sound? I've never heard of it. And then a friend of mine, she said, oh, don't you like this art called crumb? I'm like, yeah, that sounds about right. Drove it down to what we call Menzies Avenue. So if you heard of Menzies Avenue, it's a relatively um, rough and, and uh, you know, sort of rugged. And it's not a very safe place, right? But we thought, look, they've got to be crumpers. Um, we should be safe enough. We all speak the same language or whatever. And then the work at that point was already established. We already had like, I think eight people um, uh, in, in the band, and Pete Tom Silkberg was like sort of the founder of the work. And so I sort of just slotted myself in um, these bands. And that's how we sort of emerged from that perspective. But I know there were people like, you know, Manifest or his old name used to be free expression. And there's a reason why he changed, but that's a whole different story. Um, based on Battle of the Existence, I'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, where he was advocating for the Sydney movement and a lot of people from Brisbane are also advocating for the Brisbane movement. But because we're so new, we want to focus on just where we sat. So we're just confined to say, you know, um, Danny Long South East, and then the closest people were the West Side and then the Northern, um, uh, in uh, what they call um, sat and then right to the North. BC fam, sorry, sorry, BC fam. Um, they're also equally as important as the Royal fam. So, um, I believe there were many more practitioners, specifically these guys. I think, um, can I just use these guys? So, Bull Rush Man, Bull Rush Man, what they called? Rush Man? Rush Man. Rush Man, yeah. So, there were like kids in the dark. We were already sort of um, out in the open, and, but these guys were practicing as early as we have, but we weren't recognizing them because they were part of the movement. So, officially, the Crom movement in Melbourne started in 05. That's, that's the deadline, right? So, that's how it emerged. Found in the forum, and it was just organic from there, so I'll stop. Okay, and that also ties into our next question, which is directed to Chaos. What drew you to Crump, and how did you see it evolving in its initial years? Okay, um, so for me, when I first saw Crump, I think I was actually watching a movie, and I saw, uh, a, you know, previews come out like a lot earlier. Uh, I actually saw a preview of Rise, and it's, I actually enjoyed that uh, preview more than the actual movie that I watched. Yeah. <laughs> And then it caught my attention. I was like, oh, what's this crump? And then um, I ended up Googling it. Um, and I came up with Russian potatoes. No. That's, how, that's how it was started. And then, but slowly, slowly, I, I just started to find little avenues of people and stuff. And, um, and we, I heard about, we, we ended up hearing about each other, like, you know, a little bit here and there. And then, I found out about uh, Danny Long as well, and we ended up going down, um, and yeah, that's pretty much where it started for us, like, just boys who became brothers over time, um, and for me, that's pretty much the heart behind Burn City Crump, you know, where we all come from different backgrounds, but we're all able to be united in, even with our different walks. And um, yeah, that, that's pretty much, am I going off topic, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and over the years has developed like, because one thing I want to say, we had to learn this from what we just observed. We didn't have no YouTubes. We didn't have no, uh, you know, crumb DVDs and all that stuff. We, we learned how to just naturally move and feel the music rather than be technical. Um, it was only when we started realizing that the DVDs were coming out, yeah, that we, the whole series, that we all came these are the foundations and so forth, and then and that's when we realized that, okay, this is actually something. And to be honest with you, with the whole hip hop scene, we weren't accepted at all, um, because they just thought we were going mad or having a fit. And um, no, I'm just being honest with you. And actually, the biggest scene that we struggled with was the b boy scene. Um, and actually, my god brother is Lama Rock, right? So I used to be like dance with him, and then when he when I branched off the crumb, he was getting it like we would just vibe with each other, you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, the, the evolution of how it grew over time. Can I just say you are the product of what we fought for? That's why you have crumb today, because we had to get all the crap from everybody else. Because they're saying this is not a real dance style, this is not a real culture. You know, because what, what makes a dance style, you know, a culture? It's the music, it's the language, it's the foundations. 
You know, th those are, that's what makes Crum culture, yeah? And so, and you know, and I just want to say right now, I know I'm going off time a little bit, but um, it's beautiful to see you guys. I may not know you guys personally, but seeing where Crump is now, it, it, it really, um, it, for, for us, I guess, it really touches our hearts that this is something that we nearly did, what, 18, 19 years ago, and it's here still today. And uh, I just want to also say thank you to everyone and keep it in mind. I think that's really important to touch on, and I think that's what a lot of people don't realize is that, you know, Crump wasn't always accepted and we were always ridiculed. So we're very fortunate to be able to step into all style spaces and just spaces in general and be able to make some noise and make a mark in this dance scene since that wasn't always the case. So we are actually very fortunate, um, and that's why we're so lucky to have the OGs here to talk about these things. Um, also, to touch on, um, you mentioned fans like Royal Fam and Rush Fam and all things like Rush Crew and stuff. So, um, Rustus and Chaos, how did the formation of crews like Royal Fam um, and Street Kingdom influence the growth of Burn City Crump? And maybe just a bit of an explanation on these crews, since a lot of people might not know that. Formation of the Royal Fam, okay. Um, Jeez. I actually don't even know where it's like the actual origin. The name, I'm talking about the name. So the Royals, um, so this is our symbol, whole, the royal symbol, our uh, hand. Yeah. Actually, so the, the figures that you see is a crown. Right? Um, but because Nick Tom, uh, aka Silk, the, the originator, uh, he was also heavily um, influenced by the Christian movement of it. Okay, because if you don't know, Kingdom Radically Uplifting Mighty Praises. And that's one of the main reasons why I did it in the first place. So also a part of my bio, I'm actually a pastor as well. So um, this was where my journey started with all this stuff. Now, moving forward, um, with the boys, it, everything was organic. It was never forced. It was never, like, it was just young guys. Well, I, wasn't, I was probably one of the older ones. But the young gentlemen coming together, doing the dance that they loved, and we just allowed it to naturally grow. And, um, and, and then from there, we realized that we had to have, um, I, I guess, a system. Because if you think about it like this, what is Crump? Crump is based on family. That's why you have a big army, that's why you have the littles and everything like that. And in other words, there's hierarchy, and there's respect. And also, with a lot of the royals that were involved and with us, a lot of them come from Polynesian backgrounds. Either Samoan, Cook Island, or Filipino, Indonesian, like we were all different, right? But one thing that we always had in common was family. Yeah? And that's why the heart behind Burn City is family. Is that making sense? Yeah? Because when the what I believe is this, if one part of the family hurts, the whole family hurts. If there's issues in the in our family, we solve it straight away. Why? Because we don't allow it to go outside. Yeah, especially interstate. To be honest with you, I'm not going on the tangent, but with interstate stuff, we don't go, we don't bother about what's happening over there. We focus on what's happening in our own backyard. Is that cool? But yeah, the, with the Royals, it was just all the boys. I think there was like uh, eight to ten of us. Yeah, and then the other boys that joined in later were like, uh, actually, the later editions was rough, I believe. Was it? A flyer boy and school kid. They were the last royals, I think, for me. And... Were you in there too? Okay. Yeah, I was like, you just kind of had stuff. But they were the, they were the last... Um, the, but they stopped me. So that was the last uh, edition for the royals, yeah. I hope that helps. Hey, that's yeah, thank you, man. Um, getting older, sorry. Memory is fleeting a little bit, but I think, um, so just contextually in terms of why we call them fans, and I think this needs to be sort of cognizant of where Crumb came from, particularly in LA and such, and you know, this was heavily involved with game culture. So obviously the fans, their crews, their boys, um, we somewhat replicated that, except with just the less violent stuff. So we were very privy to it. So there's a crew that I was closely, and this was with OG Beast's crew. So I'm talking 
we've done really well. So um, this preceded like Sweet Kingdom and these guys. So they actually called CRU crew. Um, so I had a couple of uh, guys, and they were sort of like your Bay Area, San Francisco party like stuff. Because you've got the, you know, the Bay Area turf movement, and then you've got the Crumpers sort of like blending in. And, and these guys used to like run um, session like parties. It's like crew would run a mad party, white scratch crowns would run up, like, right, um, doing like a mad party. Like, that's how they battle. This group has the most people at the session, but it's like a party. Anyway, so these guys told us about, particularly like Bruce Star is the piece. Um, he told me about the violence of crime. So it's just to be aware that this came from this, but he never recommended or you know um, condoned this behavior. So we took that and then we sort of spun it. And this is where they, which we'll talk about a little later on, the Christ Up era was really coming about. So the royal family was sort of blending that. And I think we all acknowledge it, that this is the Bruce of crime. It came from gay violence and stuff. But it's for a, a greater purpose in how we sort of um, integrate uh, sort of family, hip hop, and stuff like that. And again, a lot of excommunication happened during those early days. Um, so we had to almost, he almost went past life and family, Dominic Toro, that type of thing. And this is what it was. We had to back each other. Um, and it was, it was just that. So the influence was still there. And it is still ongoing, especially with the new, new guys with the orphans and, and the individual fans. But um, I'll leave it there's plenty to talk about. Amazing. Um, we're going to direct it to the vets now. Um, Answer the scout. How did you find Crump back when you started, and what kept you coming back? <coughs> uh, when I first started Crump, when I was a kid, I was when I was like this kid, when I was like nineteen. Was it nineteen? I think I was close. Kind of. Anyways, I was a really shy kid. Right? So when I first came. I was like really intimidated. Like what Chaos said, the majority of the people were Pacific Islanders. So you see this little Filipino kid, and you see these Pacific Islanders, and my head was like at the kneecaps. Like, hey, bro. <laughs> Anyways, that's. <laughs> so I found that intimidating. What kept me coming back was the feeling of it. Um, like I said, I was a shy kid. I felt like when I was in a session, I could speak out what was on my mind and I was able to um, communicate without using my words, just my art form. And that's what kept me coming back. And that's what, why I'm still here. Um, even though now I talk a lot of stuff, but I talk too much. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Mm. Anyways. Um, Thanks, bro. Um, how I found Trump was from watching um, some of the other. Uh, before that, uh, Russell actually told me about Rise because he was doing, uh, back in high school, we went to high school together. Uh, back in high school, he was doing this bad subject and it was dance. They kicked me out. <clears throat> and they kicked him out. <laughs> <laughs> um, I wasn't, I mean, I was really into dance at the time. I've been dancing since I was little, back in the Philippines. But the idea of doing a dance class didn't really, uh, a dance course didn't really sell to me. Um, but we were going to the same school regardless. Uh, and he was telling me about Rise because they watched it in, in his class. And I was like, oh yeah, that's cool. And then Stop the Art came around. And I was like, oh, Rise, that's the one you're talking about. Yeah. And, yeah. And then, you know, here we are. Um, what kept me coming back? Uh, there's a lot of different reasons. Um, heaps <laughs> of different reasons, uh, but to narrow it down is just the, just the joy of dancing, really. Um, uh, whenever I, as most of you guys know me, and some, some of you guys know me personally, I do a lot of different things outside of punk, um, especially now that, you know, we, some of us do this for a living, or, or part of it for a living. Um, whenever I dance, uh, everything else in my, you know, all the art form that I do, and well, the way I do my art form becomes better because I'm dancing, if that makes sense. Um, whenever I'm not dancing, and this, it's very seasonal for me, in like, you know, in three months, I'll show up straight one month, and then there'll be a month where you won't really see me. You might see me online, but you won't see me in person. Um, and, you know, and I do that on purpose to kind of like, pull myself away and just do my thing. Um, yeah, so I think that's what keeps, keeps you from coming back. 
in the past, I really wanted to just, you know, you know can I swear? You just oh, really, you know, say like, fuck it, you know, fuck all this, um, and just do me, just do whatever. But yeah, then again, dancing is fun, so yeah. Yeah, I feel like that's the one thing that's never changed throughout the eras of dance in general. It's just dance is a, you know, a freedom. It's our expression, and that's our verbiage half the time. What we can't express through words, we use through dance. Um, I know Scout and OGs talked about this a little bit, just like in regards to feeling ostracized in all style, by all style communities, and being intimidated in dance. Um, but what, what were some of the defining challenges during the different eras of Burn City Crump, and how did they shape your leadership and community building today? Um, we'll open that up to the floor, so whoever wants to answer. I think the biggest challenges that we found, because remember, we had to start from scratch, so we had to figure everything out on the fly. Um, but the biggest challenges that we found, I believe, uh, was actually more external than internal. Because we were fighting for something that we all believed in, and we were going against the world to try and prove that this thing's supposed to stay. Um, that was the biggest challenges for us, as I was mentioning before. But one of the things that I really do believe um, that when we discuss, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you a little bit of background. Before, with Crump, especially our state, I want you to know that Burn City was the number one state in all of Australia. We are considered the LA of Crump in Australia, right? Because of our unity and because of how we dance, yeah? Because we were always different. We were always like pushing the boundaries, right? Um, but our biggest thing that we always tried to do when we always came together and there was issues, maybe internally, um, we, we always dealt with it in a sense because we are the example for everybody else. Does that make sense? Because I'm a big believer on a leader does not make more followers, they make more leaders. All my little homies are all leaders. Gian is my little homie. Ian Adelo is my little homie. Yeah? Um, Pat Mabanta, twin, he's in Philippines. He's the big homie of Philippines. Yeah, Adram is a lead, he's also a, uh, in Philippines, in Pong, in South Australia, he's a leader as well. Um, Vlad is my little homie, yeah, and I've had other little homies like Anna, like all my little homies have been a leader to a certain extent. But their goal is to produce more leaders. Does that make sense? And I think that's going to be the biggest challenge that we faced because we knew that we weren't going to do this forever and trying to pass that on is, was, a, was a big deal for us. Um, and so, yeah, that, that's one of the things that I, I, I found with us. Um, I think, going a little bit back from Homer's point, um, I think the challenges initially with us was acceptance just amongst each other, as you know, uh, band members and stuff, and really competing against each other, and really finding our own place within you know, the 3177 we're talking Daniel and uh, that was the first challenge. So sort of like as we all lead to Polynesian community, here come, you know, Southeast Asians, how do we fit into this sort of mold? Do we fit in at all? So for a few years I think it was it was more competitive just in you know, in a circle. So it was more for at least for me initially the um the defining challenge was acceptance with each other first. So, so, so if we've got to back each other, how are we supposed to spread that, right? And then we started to you know, collude and, 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 and get into, um, you know, uh, sort of, you know, um, let's say BC family in terms of what they're trying to do with Trump, and then we tried to sort of push that gap. Noting the north side at the time, I mean, not a lot of us drove cars, I guess, we had to take public transport and stuff, and, you know, this is Roxbury Park, so Daniel is not close, right? Noting we're in Melbourne, um, so we made an effort to do that. And then the gap was another level. So once we're united in Dandenong, now we have to be united in the northern suburbs. And it had that, you know, suburb the suburbs. So that was, the, and I think that was the defining challenge before we were like, let's take on the b-boys now, let's take on the hip-hop dancers, let's do that. Um, but there's a, there's a crazy story on that, which we'll get into in a second. But I think um, early days, that's sort of my perspective on how I was able to Um... 
I think this was pretty much covered it and what you said with the Osase. Just being accepted and just being recognized as a dance style or as an art form. Um, when we first came in, especially these boys, like when all starts first happened, we were lucky to get two or three in one year. And the four names you should be looking up to when it comes to all stars is Antagonized, Shrip, Ill Kid, and Flywing. Um, they were always in the front line. I was like in the background just talking crap. Just like making friends, like, hey man, how are you doing? And every time antagonized dance, and people mistake me for antagonized, I'm like, oh, thanks bro, I appreciate it. So I just acted like I was antagonized. So, so everyone thought I did a lot, but I didn't, and I was just talking a lot of shit. <laughs> but yeah, most, most of the stuff that we had to go through was all that hate. Even when, um, and just showing love back, even though they were hating on us so much, uh, the only thing we could do was show love back. Um, but that was pretty much it. But there was like nothing else for me to really go on, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I just wanted to um, <clears throat> put some context and, and background to this. So from what Homer and I said, Chaos and I said, to what Scout just said, that's a massive time skip. We're talking 10 years. So there's a lot of stuff in between. So hopefully that's a nice and the parts and forth. Um, so I think if the question was, you know, how did they, what, 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 what challenges during different eras of Rosie Yeah, so there was a time where, when this Harma Chaos was leading a lot, he was doing a lot of events and all that, and there was a time where he stopped doing that, just boom, stop, and just, he needed to focus on what he needed to focus on. Um, and then uh, Ruff, aka MVP, um, kind of took over to do his thing. He was already kind of doing it before Horma completely stepped down. Um, and then he had to go, because he, he's a Mormon, so he had to go on his mission, um, stays for like two, three years. Um, and for a long time, there was not much prom events happening for, I don't know, for, I'm not sure how long. This is, I'm talking, I'm talking like around 2012, to maybe, I don't know, 15, 14, something like that. Um, maybe even earlier, 2010. Um, but in saying that, we didn't need any event but, um, for the crumb community to flourish. There was always uh, crumb sessions happening here and there. Um, that's how the crumb sessions in the city started happening, is because of my gen our, our generation, uh, the third generation, because before that, there was MMA. Melbourne Music Academy. Um, so that was basically the only sessions in the city. So if you really wanted to get into prom, you either had to go to Werribee or Dandenong. Um, all rocks with Park or Epping. And these are all places, you know, at least 45 to an hour away from the city. And yeah, and it's, you know, it's a long way to go. Um, so our generation, because of hanging out with Mute Guru, shout out to Nan, uh, Mute Guru was always, um, uh, rehearsing at, uh, at the back of RMIT, just for free space. Um, and me and Russell were like, uh, why don't we uh, have a session here? So yeah, so me, myself, even Ross was around that time, um, and Vlad, uh, we started, uh, we just started session there, and then a few of us from, um, specifically from third generation campus, we created this band called Legacy Band, um, and there was five of us, so me, Russell, Vlad, uh, J Flyboy, J Psych, and Ugram at the time. Yeah, so yeah, so we started we did that just so we can establish another prom thing happening in the city. So for a long time we were there and all the OGs came to support and just to go back by you know what I'm saying, like you know, the core foundation of Burn City Prom. It doesn't matter who is leading or who's doing something. People will always come support. It doesn't matter who it is as well. OGs, new, new, new gems, doesn't matter. Like, you know, people always give support. Um, and sometimes as well, there's weeks where we had crazy, uh, like epic sessions. There's only three of us. But it's like some of the most epic um, times that we've had um, in terms of prompt energy. Um, and most of it is not recorded either. Um, yeah, so there was always that popping off. 
At the same time, the second gen rompers in Werribee United Fan were still doing their thing back in Werribee with erupts because erupt lived around that era for, for a bit. So yeah, so just to kind of mash mash that all together that you know like the challenges with us is always been like kind of people always looked around to who who is gonna do the next thing. You know, sometimes people were kind of scared or you know, maybe it's just not within their personality to lead or whatever. Um, for a long time, me personally, I didn't I didn't understand it, you know, because to me I'm just like if you want to do something, you just do it, you know, because like, that was that's kind of like I don't know, I suppose how I was, I was brought up. So I had to kind of learn a few things as I get up, I got older to like, you know, sometimes it's just not within people's either capacity or interest to really start something like this, you know, and that's okay because someone else will do it. Because um, for a long time as well, I got tired, I was burnt out from doing other things. Um, not that I'm, I'm saying that I carried everything, no, like Russell, you ground, there was a time where they were the ones hosting the session at Big Market. Some of you, gen some generations of conferences started when Big Market sessions were, were popping off. So yeah, that, yeah, that era, I reckon that's like maybe close to some of the, you know, some of the, if there was a golden, uh, golden, golden era of Versity Prompt, that would be the second to that that big market session. There's a lot of a lot of legendary stuff that happened there. Um, Tara has has danced there. Um, Beast, One K, some of the people from you know from New Zealand and all of Australia have danced there. Um, some of the most epic battles. Beef, I battled Kampachi there. <laughs> <laughs> like an epic ass epic ass one hour battle, just me and him back and forth um, over some stupid. You know, egotistic thing that we both <laughs> did on Instagram. Oh no, Instagram on Facebook. Yeah, hey. <laughs> 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 very laughing is yeah. the funniest so, part. Whenever, whenever, whenever we get back, we kind of like talk about that. We're like, yeah, bro, that was good times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know, that's that's the era. Yeah, that's the era. Yeah, that's the era. Yeah, we kept it prompt. Oh no, no, we prompt was Kogashi was in was in prompt, or he's not prompt, but we kept it in the dance. Like we weren't like gonna fight and. At the time as well, it was much like mad respect to Kenpachi till this day that this guy came to our session to settle the beef or whatever, you know? Um, you know, like none of this back talk, you know, like we, we started in the comments of some purse and we ended it there and then we saw each other like a few days later. And then after the battle, who, like, which I don't really care, I personally don't care who won, it's freaking, it's one hour, bro. Like, I feel like we both won. Um, yeah, and, you know, we, we shook hands, and we kind of just forgot about that. We're like, yeah, I mean, you know, that's all it is. We just had to, like, uh, throw that down, keep it dance, since we're both dances, because we're not going to fight, you know, like, I, I even got, I got, I, I get, um, what's the word? I got offended, I got offended one time when they came down, and, I mean, no disrespect, but Jimmy Neutron, <laughs> Um, oh. he, came to, he, he came to that session and he was like, hey, I hope everything's fine, no one's gonna like fight or anything, and I'm just like, bro. And again, again, this is the, the acceptance that we had to, you know, just from, from people as a prompt to see prompt, and you know, we touch that, we push each other, and sometimes you get accidentally hit. And to us, it's like, oh yeah, brush that off, keep going, you know, unless you're bleeding, then obviously call triple R or something. Unless you're knocked out. Yeah, unless you're knocked out, which I've never, I haven't, you know, thank God I haven't, I haven't seen that. Um, yeah, like, I, I kind of got in and I was like, bro, like, we don't fight here, what the fuck do you think this is, you know? So, yeah, I mean, yeah, and then obviously we didn't fight, like, you know, we just danced, like, there was one time where I kind of just shoved Kimbachi a little bit, but then that's me knowing, like, ah, he can take it, you know, he can, he can do it to me too if he wants. Yeah, so, Wait, uh, I kind of went around. Mad tangent there, bro. Mad. Okay, you answer the question. But yeah, yeah that's how it shaped the leadership. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so to conclude, uh, <laughs> um, I think um, at least uh, as far as this goes, um, I want to explore that a little bit more. Um, in terms of um, sort of the integration of styles and acceptance, and I think there's always a mischaracterization of, of Crump, like, you know, we're aggressive people, and, you know, that comment, that's a fair comment, hey, you guys want to keep it clean, you want to fight. That's the, that's the general consensus where they look at us. 
for us for right now, of course, we, we're chill. You know, we're, we're just gonna live on the dance floor. So I wanna, yeah, I wanna expose that a little bit more, but um, just keep that in the back of your mind. Definitely, we'll be touching on that later into the panel as well, because I you know we have a lot of open style dancers that might have some questions and concerns about crop in that aspect. Um, so we're going to move on to the cultural impact and growth of crop. Um, so we talked about like fans, little homies, and big homie dynamics. Dynamics. Um, so we're going to open the floor to the OGs again. Um, what prompted you to start passing on knowledge, and how did you do it? Well, it's crop culture. There's a big homie and then there's littles. Yeah, it's something that you can't take away from crumb. It's just like foundations. It's it's a part of it. Um, and so, as I was saying before, good leaders make more leaders, not followers. And what I did with my littles is to pass on whatever I know that I can pass on. But one of the other things that I learned as a leader is I also have to allow my little homies to grow and be happy when they surpass me because then that means you made a good leader. If whoever you train does not become better than you, then you failed. Because they're the next generation. They're the one that's supposed to bring the bar up. If the bar stays the same, you haven't done your job. That means you haven't given everything that, you, that you've actually got. And so, you know, that, that's the reason why we pass it on. It's because we, we wanted to just share the love of dance. We wanted to share the love of Crump. And um, I think that's one of the biggest strong suits of Crump because if you look at it through the years that it's been here in, in Australia, we're still standing, but we're not just standing, we're standing strong. But this is the one I want to remind everybody, especially in Burn City, we stand united. Is that, is that understood? Yeah, because that's the heart behind what Crump is. That's the heart behind all, all of us boys who became brothers, that's the heart behind what we pushed, okay? You can never take out the heart of Bird City or else the heart of Bird City will die. So that's why, you know, you gotta show that love, you gotta, you gotta pass it on, that's, that's the best thing that I can say for that. And Homer being a pastor, can I get an amen? <laughs> <laughs> right. um, yeah, so I'll unpack that dynamic that Homer did talk about, the big homie, little homie, um, I think it's pretty, uh, I'll, I'll be careful what I say, it's not typically unique in Crump, it has been used in gang culture, big homies, little homies. Um, so we've adopted that sort of mentality where it's like each one, each one. You take um, certain people that have potential to become not only leaders, but just to sort of improve in, in their work. You could just be the fun of it, or it could genuinely be like, I can see something develop and you know, you take it to another level. So. Um, in those instances where we talk about little homies, so going like really, really far back now, we're talking 0506. We used to treat little homies like Pokemon. My baby's better than your baby. My mini's better than your mini. Yeah. Hey, kid rocks, go battle, keep whatever. And then, oh yeah, we'll battle for you, it's like Pokemon, right? So, <laughs> and, 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 and if you don't like that, I choose you! Yeah, no, and, and, and um, if you don't like that, in um, the royal family, where we're like, you know, like Sunday church services and stuff, and I'm like, oh, I've met this child, and I want to make him my mini so-and-so. He goes, oh, but that's the person I want to do. Let's battle for you. And we'll battle for little homies, right? So We battle for the dumbest stuff. Yeah, the super <laughs> stuff. Right? So, so in that moment, and this is something that's quite um, different compared to, say, LA, um, they took that gang stuff quite literally. So it's so sort of like, you don't <coughs> encourage into our territory. That's my little homie. These guys were also my little homies too, right? And they were also chaos. So they were also rockers and chaos at the same time. Except for Russell. <laughs> oh yeah, he wasn't, sorry. He wasn't, oh, he was a rock, right? So, but Kian, he was kid rocks and kid chaos at the same time. So, but between Homer and I, I think we had a, a more of a, um, somewhat of a diplomatic understanding that I can show something that Kian can use and Homer can teach something. I said, between us, we're like, you know, that's a really good dynamic. Like, if we can, our community is small anyway, so it's sort of like, we didn't have, 100 people on Perth wants to choose from. We just have Pikachu. <laughs> so, anyway, so, so we shared that, and I think um, that sort of um, gave us initially, and you know, they had multiple AKAs. We had little secret friends, AKA Twin Chaos, AKA Twin, whatever, right? So, they're not really like that. And we thought, you know what, we might as well actually, you know, each one's each one. So, Vlad, um, you know, he's Twin Rocks, so he was, um, and he's taken to another level, and he asked me, and this is something that he learned from like LA. He was like, hey, 
Um, you know, I want to join the beast camp, or I want to, you know, the chaos. What do you think about? Like, I've been doing all these guys. Go for it. There's nothing that prevents me to stop that because, as a leader, I don't think I should restrict anyone's um, growth. And if you see that chaos can actually help you in that facet, absolutely take it on. I believe in um, a, a time where you know, when you talk about mentorship, it needs to be taken from everywhere, not just sort of one area. I don't have it all. Maybe he's a better mentor than I am in certain capacities, so take that on. I encourage you. Whether or not you talk about loyalty now, that's all we can ballgame. So for me, Grumpy is serious only as far as you know what we talk about service level. So if I can help you guys develop into professionals, say you know um, in wherever workplaces and stuff, you know, um, you know I use Crump. I've been very away from Crump because I use it in my professional career. So right now I work for before, um, uh, and I'm an assistant director at KPMG. So I use this lesson that I've learned from Homer about how he. That charismatic leadership. And he's always had it ever since like Jesus, oh five, oh six. And he's learned so I've learned from him from the background. He never, I never tell him this, but then um, I adopted. So if I can people, then I asked the boys, how did chaos train you guys? I adopted that methodology. So it was my learning experience as well. And I, and I thought that like uh, if that helps you find it, it's, it's okay. But that's from sort of my perspective of why I need to pass that knowledge. And now it's coming back to me twofold. So Sharon you know, asked me to come back and help us out with some of this stuff. Even guys in the firm that I've only just met, they're like, hey, you dance crumb, right? I've seen you because like, I just graduated from RMIT and uh, I've seen you dance for 15 years. I'm like, what the hell is this kid? Like, this guy's you know, an accountant, and you know me, how do you know me? Anyway, so that's, and it's sort of, it's paying its dividends, and I'm still here to do that for everyone here, so. Uh, sorry, go clap if you want. <laughs> yeah, because um, also um, with, with Crump, it wasn't just about the dance, it was about doing life together, actually. Um, you know, especially with, you know, we would encourage them to, especially because I, I, I don't know if you know Chris Castillo, but uh, he was my, my little homie as well, and Gina, you know, they're my little homies. Uh, man, I got stories Everyone's about them. Anyway. <laughs> All of your homies. Every single yeah, you know when I go back home to the Philippines, because like I'm one of the OGs there, they're like, hey, you're the big homie of my big homies, big homie, so you're like my grandfather. And I'm like, you know what, you need to shut up. Anyway. <laughs> But it's been that, um, you know, because it was, especially because when we were mentor, uh, teaching Crump, a lot of these guys were in school still. And I, I'll be honest, it became where Crump was more important than school. And we had to actually push them to go to school rather than focus on dance. Because this is one thing I want to say to you, dance will always be here. Crump will always be here. We left, but we're here. Like, do, do you get what I'm saying? He's, he's a professional, I have a dental clinic, like we're all, we're doing different things. And a pastor, yes. <laughs> you know I mean? I feel like I do my pastor more than my business. <laughs> like, um, but like, like Ross was saying, we all learn off each other, actually. Like, there's a lot that I had to learn off him. And, um, you know, but one thing that was so, uh, I guess, important for us was to just making sure that we were guiding the right way, yeah? Because whatever tracks you guys lay down from here going forward will determine where this crump game is gonna go and how it's gonna grow. Does, does that make sense? Yeah? So lay the tracks well, and then it will flourish. Is that cool? All right. Thank you. something we should all take on, whether you're a new gen or you've been around for a long time. I think that's something that we should all listen and abide by in this current culture. Um, to go to Anson Scout, um, how has learning crump changed over the years? I know we talked about back in the day, we didn't have you know social media, we didn't have all these connections. Um, a lot of it was based on feeling and just things like that. But how has crump changed over the years, learning it, and what key changes have you guys observed? As um, now. I think the main thing that's changed is the accessibility to it. Like, there's so much information out there that you can just type out on YouTube. Like, back in Homer's Day, they only had the pipe virus and stuff, so you could go on YouTube. Yeah, so you could go on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, there's be any, <laughs> so, there's barely any information of us. I mean, these guys were great teachers, but they only had what? Um, the, their information was limited as well because there was no internet. Dude, man, it's my turn to talk. 
Um, but yeah, now that's accessibility to it, you guys can just suck it up. There's so much teachers out there, like Hatshot, Antagonize, the well, not these guys, because they're retired. Um, David, you can pretty much hit up anyone you want and they can teach you. Even amongst yourselves, you guys have um, the knowledge to teach, um, to grow with each other. So I think that's what's pretty much changed. Or, um, yeah. Yeah, what Russell said. Um, and also, if you, you know, if sometimes you don't wanna, or you're sick of learning from the same people in your city, nowadays it's so easy to get, um, you know, a private class from Beast or from Monte or from Miho himself, Tadais if you want. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, from from anyone really. So, you know, so the internet age has really taken over. Back in the day. There was only one Chrome class that we knew of, which was, it's, you know, at the time Chrome was teaching chaos, but when me and Russell came into the scene, he stopped teaching, so Russell is best taking over. But well, we never went to those. <laughs> <laughs> they had their money. They had their yeah, money. We, we, they just watch. We just watch. Yeah, and then look at us now. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, you know, and because nowadays I always encourage you guys to do classes, blah, blah, blah. Because um, classes are good, you know, because if we, we, maybe if we did go, if we did pay to go to class, we probably got better quicker. Um, but yeah, it took us years. Um, but in saying that, you know, we always were uh, present at the sessions. Um, you know, like what they said, like they treated little homies like broken ones. So as a little homie, I still am, um, you have to be ready because sometimes you're like, yo, kid, you're better than this person today. Oh, like, <coughs> Right. I just got here, but sweet, let's go. You know what I mean? Like, you, you, you just have to be ready. And if you lose, it's fine. Like, you know, at the end of the day, it's just a dance. I mean, it's, it's really not that deep. You know, when you lose anyway, like, it can be deep, but you, you gotta learn how to lose. You gotta learn how to take a punch. If you don't, then you got heaps of learning to do. Um, but yeah, so I think over the years, that's how it's changed. Um, yeah, move on. Don't have to clap every single person. Like, it's not just listen to me. Um, we have touched on a lot of the past um, with crop generations. Um, I'm going to open up to everyone because I feel like everyone has a different perspective. Um, we'll start with Roxas. What major changes have you seen in the different generations of croppers? Is there major changes? Is there similarities? Anything of the sort? I guess the biggest, um, I guess, major change is the wealth of information available as of today. Um, so the growth of um, the skill, we're talking the, the technicalities of crop is exponential. So what we achieved in say 10 years, you guys can do it in one, and that's the reality. Um, the difference between being technically good as a dancer is also what defines your essence in crop, right? I think that's slowly starting to be muddled. Like what defines essence in crunk um, in terms of things like you know how do you define certain terminologies um, you know what defines a get off what defines a kill off that sort of is starting to become a bit blended but that's naturalistic to any evolution and it has to happen but that's probably the biggest thing I can see is the advent of social media and people sharing you know they got TikTok and getting viral off just comments right and that's happened um, that would be, if we had that in our generation, I don't think that, that would have actually did much difference because we were still trading footage with the US, with France and stuff like that by sending like 56 day modem, now it's like 80 cell, that's like, right, yeah, yeah, it's not that old, but, um, you know, five megabyte snippets, like 10 second clips, and go, what's your email address? So there was nothing that tight enough to go, ruin versus so and so, let's just watch that and just, just go over and over. We just had, Five megapixels, that's all you get. Dark room. I think that's an arm swing. I caught his head at the same time. So, I think it's, <laughs> so you can see how that sort of, we have to figure it out. Until Tyler's actually stamped his approval and came down to that, you guys have achieved. That's when we said, okay, I think we're doing the right thing. Um, but you guys now, and I think I, I'm a bit worried in terms of that progression because now there's so much information is what's actually valid and what is not valid, right? So you've got people coming out out of the woodworks teaching stuff and you're like, wait, how did you? 
I, I appreciate there is no standard in Oakmont. We don't have like a Crump University, like say Australian Ballet School, that have got a standard. Whether that's appropriate or not in street style, I don't know. But the standard as it stands as of today, if it hasn't been validated here, and you guys were not with us today, then that's it. So I thought, I, I, think, I don't know if people remember this, I don't know if these guys were, um, with the whole last step of Crump Cats. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, okay, so this is how personal I took that. Long story short was, this group used the word crump in their name. For me as a OG, all my minimum requirement, my bare minimum is just throw one single arm swing, a stomp, a chest block, and any jab, in any variation that you like. I'm, if it doesn't have to be technically right, I'll be like, you know what, they gave me the crack. Not a single arm thing, but arm swing was thrown. I took offense to that, because the term crump is about identity, right? So I brought it up with the organizers and I posted stuff on social media. Eventually, the whole community came down, including the hip hop uh, choreography community, going, like, yeah, bro, they shouldn't have done that. Even the organizer at the time was like, I should have vetted that because I didn't know it was that serious. She knew because I remember with, oh, Step Off used to be called Get Crump. Me and Homer told Anna, you need to get rid of that name. That's why we changed the Step Off. Because she was like, oh, I didn't know it was that serious to you guys. And it is, and it still is to this day. So even just on name, I fight for that, whatever that is, right? Because it's something, you know? And um, yeah, it, it, it almost turned patient where, you know, because of our terminology, let's go down to, um, you know, uh, where they, Vermont in the north, south, uh, um, in the east, go to the studios and battle them and kill them off. Imagine that. A group of, a studio that does jazz, hearing about getting killed off. You're like, oh, what's this about, right? <laughs> and it was many people all colluded and, you know, got <laughs> Yeah, not the literal way, but yeah, so R&R &R and all this, and like, yeah, hey, let's all go down there. And they're like, wait, they're calling the police on us, like legit. Like, see, <coughs> assist, whatever, and we're like, what the hell? Clear, clear with the air, and we get the show and stuff, and police was always on our back in session. So we sort of knew how to deal with police in the first place. Once they understood the context, oh, this is a non-issue, it's not even a criminal, like, it's nothing. So we offered our service, and they said no, and they just left it like that. So, um, I guess that, that whole, changing what is valid and i heard some people teaching crump in that and i'm like that's not right go to Gian's class for at least six months minimum hyperbolic time chamber do a test and then you can feed crump that's like the sort of standard i look up but if that is say someone like Gian Russell saying this guy's not valid you're not valid so that's the change at the moment is what is realistic what is valid and what is not so i would recommend talk to these guys talk to me and say this is something that's legitimate that i can follow and then if, it, if it's right, it doesn't necessarily mean that's the only way as well. So there was an instance where we actually blocked certain moves in actually being done. So things like puzzles weren't bad, twerking, all this sort of stuff, because from the clown movement. We weren't allowed to do that. Now it's being slowly accepted in certain capacities. Twerking. Russell, number one twerker. Daggering. Um, <laughs> so that, that, that was being blocked. We couldn't do certain moves. Now it's being a little bit more um, you know, accepted. So now it's, it's coming back now. So it's like, but can we integrate puzzles now? Can we do turf moves? Can we do bone breaking moves? Actually, we probably could. We still make a crumb. So. Are we? Yeah, we'll just keep conscious of the time. Um, I do think that is a really important point. Um, yes, information is accessible to us, but just make sure it's the right information. You're going to the right people. Um, we are so fortunate that we do have OGs still hanging around and we are so fortunate that we have active vets. So these are the people that you really should be going to if you do have any concerns or questions about Crump in any capacity. Um, we're going to move on to the Crump and the Crumpers. Um, we'll start with antagonist. What distinguishes Burr City Crump from other states in Australia and Oceania? This is a big okay. question. You could, you could do some damage with this question. On it's the because we bought this one. Um, <laughs> yeah, me and Vlad came up with that saying, actually. Um, but what distinguishes us? Because, uh, and I actually got this um, idea from Lamarok, is that a lot of us, and this, I think it's just this outside of Promise or like this burn city altogether, that in if you're if you're a dancer or a battle dancer from Melbourne and you you know, you're respected in that, even if you lose to someone from a different state, we're still kind of better than you. <laughs> 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 True. 
True, because you know, we're better looking, we're better dressed, we're better equipped for different kinds of weather. We're just better, bro. Because that's why everyone loves it here. Like, you know, who else says, everyone says fuck Melbourne, but psh, you love it here. You know, everyone wants to move here. Everyone, people have moved here and then left because they couldn't handle it. <laughs> nah, uh, what is that? I mean, in saying that, it is true. It's like, I feel like um, people love coming here because there's a certain energy in this city. Um, not just from, just overall, um, that makes it kind of, you know, it's, it's cool to be here. Um, it's welcoming. Um, just the culture here is different, and we probably have, we don't just have prompt to thank for that. We have literally the whole city's culture uh, for that. That integrates in Grump, and in Grump, we're like some of the chillest people, you know? Like, we're like, man, you wouldn't even think we dance like that if you didn't see us dance first and if you met us in person, you know? And then and vice versa, you know? You, so you just see us dance, and then you see Russell twerking after the session. Right? <laughs> it's, what it is. it's crazy. <laughs> The contrast change is insane. Um, so yeah, I think I feel like it's just fun, you know. Like I've been to different cities in, in around Australia. I've been fortunate enough to be, to get around. And as much as I respect a lot of those cities, uh, even them, they say like, where it's not, you know, the hype's different in Melbourne, you know. Like, and I'm like, yeah, it's true, you know. Like in Sydney, I feel like I have to, I have to, I have to teleport in Sydney to like an inch before I get hype. Before I get hyped or something, or if I'm in Perth, same thing. You know, like only like two people will be hyping me because they understand it, they get it. Brisbane, kind of weird as well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm probably gonna get called out heaps, but heaps. <laughs> come, I don't care if I lose. I'm still better than you. Um, yeah, so that's the uh, that's what distinguishes us, you know. And me saying that, that's just me being bluff, you know. Like I don't care. Prove me wrong. That's it. Um, yeah. If, if you guys can answer that better, please do so. You knock yourself a hole, right? I'm just trying to man. Yeah, I dig myself a hole and then get out as well and then dig it again. Ooh. And then jump in again and I'll live in that underground, bro. And then I'll invite you over and then kill you. So, yeah. Someone take the mic. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. you <laughs> 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 okay. okay. well, well, question is directed to you anyway. Um, what areas need improvement among crumpets and what aspects have it impressed you? Um, I'll start with what's impressed me. Ooh. Okay. Okay, so everyone's very impressive. <laughs> Um, I think what's impressed me is that you guys still have the hunger that we had. I think it's a little bit different because we had to fight for um, names. Every every session I went to, my name was always on the line because the crowd was like, you haven't been to the session for a day, man. <laughs> oh man, I'm sorry. But um, you guys are so hungry to get better, to get the knowledge. You guys are always showing up, showing each other support. Um, so that's what's impressed me. Improvement wise, I don't know. Let me think for a second. Take your time. Hmm. Do we start? Yeah, yeah, you start. Uh, and then let me jump start from Brent. Um, yeah, I don't, like, I think I um, echo what Russell said. I think we've been impressed with the, with, uh, the current movement. All the active companies from new gens all the way to the heavy hitters vets. So I think that's a no brainer. Um, now, I think. Probably going to introduce a bit of a um, sticking point um, with the relations to improvement. Um, there's a reason why we're talking about you know fighting for a particular right, right? In, in, a, in a set community or in a, in a particular culture. Now, like I was talking to you guys about before, trajectory. Um, there are instances where I observe that you're running before you even start to even crawl which means you're superimposing certain statuses where you should be saying, well, let me just think about this first and do that because you're already, quote unquote, on a pedestal. That's a bit, for us as OGs, because we're so time-bound, 
we're talking over nearly two decades. That's a long time. It's like half our lives, you know what I mean? We didn't do any of that until, wow, like 15 years maybe? To really go, okay, I think I need to start putting my status in there. You need to calm down, like you need to stop. It's difficult for someone, now I'm going to speak about my perspective, OG perspective at the moment. I might have a different opinion. I'm a bit sensitive when it comes to these matters because I understand personal growth. I don't want to, I don't want to see people leave the movement because in our early days, I have seen people leave, particularly the females, leave because of this sort of you know, superimposed, over masculine dance style where it's supposed to be safe. This guy, this person gets really tight, then all of a sudden they think of the best. That ego gets conflated. They start physically fighting. They leave the scene. This happens so many times. We had a lot of lockers, poppers. They come in sweat, they get heated, they end up fighting and stuff. By the way, did you understand the essence of Trump in the first place? Like, we get it, it's tight. Yeah. But really take a step back and do that. And I think something's happening here that needs to be sort of take a step back, relax. I'm not in a position to tell you if that's wrong or right. That ship has sailed. And I don't be the best person to say that. So I leave it to my compatriots, particularly the vets at the moment, to steer that ship. We can do the lighthouse, right? To guide you through it. But if you hit the rock, you hit the rock. And that's the sort of improvement. Slow your roll. Leaders, current vets, teachers. Because if we need to come back, it's going to be ugly, man. A proper ugly. We get rough, we get blitz, we get merciful. We'll get dirty, like proper. And I think it's a bit of a fault of us trying to introduce that very physical part of Trump. I'm probably a party to that in terms of the touching physical elements. Yeah. And then that sort of created this sort of like, oh wow, we, you know, getting really rough and rough and getting our spatial awareness is off. We did that because we genuinely got hit because we didn't know what we were doing, we didn't know any better. There's none of us in the list of world that didn't have a single injury. Someone had an injury, whether you broke a knee, whether you hit yourself in the eye with something, or you dislocated the shoulder. We hit someone, they got knocked out. So there's this guy, oh, what's that guy's name? Um, that massive guy in the um, door like that. He's really big in the building. Oh, no, no, um, eruption, eruption. Anyway, so he's from this crew competing through the door like that, right? And he's very big in the Philippines. Right? He's a Tongan, I think. And because of his size, like we, I got, so this is when, you know, you know Melbourne, that artist Melbourne? Um, and um, the kickback kids back in the day. So these guys were like tiny, tiny pops. And anyways, they were doing a performance at one of the newer um, set pops, like 2006, 2007. And they were doing a showcase. And we're like, hey, man, how come a Sydney fan did a showcase in our city first? We took the face of that. We battled them on the stage. And this is the funny thing. Erupt was supposed to battle this, I can't remember his name, um, into a dive fan. He was taking a dump, so he couldn't do it. So Junior Erupt took his place. And this is how bad it got. Junior Erupt killed him off so bad he never danced again, even to this day. That's how bad it was. Anyways, on stage, we got pretty rowdy. I got hit in the head by this big Tongan guy. And I had this massive bruise. But I was like, you know what, spirit of crap, we're all learning. Don't take it to offense. Nowadays, it's sort of like, yo, if I see some of that stuff that over encourages, like, okay, you don't want to choke her. And I'm going, no, that's going to go further than what we would expect. I'm inclined to jump in and go, no, let's stop. We're going to stop right there. What I ask for you guys today is if that happens, respect our decision to stop you guys. Right? End it. Don't go, no, I need this. If I say you're done, you're done. So you see you guys are, you know, you're finished, right? So just we need to help you mitigate and what's it called? Um, not that word. Regulate what, what's happening at the moment. Because we all know, I can bet, there's probably only one or two people in this like room that's only experienced an ant moment, right? A full ant, I'm talking blackout. I've only experienced it once, and I've never seen it again until like 18, 19 years of life, like crumb career, where you legitimately blackout. You're so ant, you shut the session down, and you just like, what happened? You watch the footage, you're like, you can never replicate that again. So there are some people that can do that, and some people that mock it. So in that regulating, we didn't understand what was happening. In that moment, we were hitting like, Big shirts, you know, people had team three hundred dollar teams and only making three hundred dollars a week, like no three hundred dollars a fortnight, ripping our shoes and we're like, what the hell just happened? <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So to, to help you guys, we're looking into the biggest improvements. It's about regulating the essence back into the movement, right? You guys are hectic in terms of the technicalities. I think you've way better than us. In the short time frame that you've been dancing, and you probably could in any given day, beat us in any given day, but I'm sure we'll take you back in another day as well. So we're cognizant of that. But the problem is you guys need to learn how to regulate the essence now. Whether to take to serious events, in terms of, is that truly a surface level issue, or is it really deeper? If it's deeper, I'm going to tell you honestly, Grum may be sometimes not able to resolve it. We might need to mediate it. So, Homer is very good at this, being who he is, right? I've backed Homer. We have differences of opinions. Just to sh show you a narrative, right? I'm going to get really deep here. Homer's a pastor, right? So, what does that infer? He's a Christian. I'm a Muslim, right? So, you can see historically, right? But we've been boys for how many? 20 years, right? We've been to each other's houses, we've been sleepovers. We have differences of opinion all the time, but we can regulate this to the next hour, right? So this is the problem at the moment I see. I think we can fix this, I think we can. But that's a little, but this is a long, it's a long conversation that needs to keep occurring. And I almost rely maybe too much of the, of the beds. But as Homer and I would agree, who said we believe this thing, right? And all we ask for is, if that decision happens at a session where we shut it down, you are done. If you don't, we'll excommunicate you out of the out of the scene if you have to. Can I? Of course. Yeah. Um, yeah, because look, the one thing that we have noticed is technically, but on all technical levels, you guys are a lot better. Same. Yeah, you are a lot better. Same. But one thing that I've also noticed, a lot of you guys have great power, but you have no control. I'm gonna be honest with you, man. I rocked up the sessions I've been in. Right? And I've been like, should I show it or should I cry? Like, do you know what I mean? Um, but I was like, oh, okay, that's okay. And to be honest with you, it was, I understand it's an accident. Like, things, things happen and things occur and, and stuff like that. And, but this is the one thing that we also learned that for a lot of us, because keep in mind, like, what getting hit is, that's just the first level. We used to jump on each other's cars. <laughs> like, we be like, Iraq was on the hook. You were on your bumper. You jumped off and you like, yeah. like, you know, yeah. and we're like, <laughs> it's like crazy, like, erupt. Oh man, remember when we were in Menzies? We had a feed, and he got so hot, he's red. And we all look at the sausages, the meat pies, the bread, and we're like, no. And then we tried to stack the ones that, ah, three second rolls, just try to work that on. But what I'm trying to say is this, guys. It's like, crop is a physical dance. You will get hit, and sometimes it will hurt, okay? But sometimes you gotta understand it's not an intentional thing, okay? Because, as I said, if I can dish out, then I should also be able to take it, okay? Does that make sense, yeah? Because as I said, I've, I've hit people by accident, and, I, and I've stopped, and I'm like, hey, I'll be like, well, I'll still look up, I'm like, hey, you all right? All right, cool, continue, bye. Like, you know what I mean? Or after the battle, I'll be honest, it was actually a lot worse with us, because we'd hit each other, and we, on the outside, we don't care, but inside, we're like, I'm gonna talk to you later, bro. Like, you know what I mean? And then after we talk, hey, sorry, you were good. Rocks, you're right, man, like, you know? And then, yeah, yeah, and then, hey, sorry, bro. like, that's that's what it is, you know? And, um, but one of the things I just want to encourage you guys is, yeah, with everything that you're doing, I know you guys get excited, I know you guys get amped, but understand the surrounding that you're in. Understand the, you, the balance that you have to have, right? Because that's important, because if you knock out everybody that's in the session, no one's gonna hype you up. That, does that make sense, yeah? And, and once again, Acknowledge when you hit someone, say sorry. Okay? Is that okay? Yeah? Because some of you are like, you don't say sorry. Bruh, say sorry, man. Do you get what I mean? You need to say sorry. Because that's what a normal human being would do. Is, is that okay? Yeah? Now, okay, sorry, man. Okay, the other thing too is this. Respect your leadership. That's one thing I want to tell you guys. You can't lead if you're not a good follower. If you do not know how to follow, you cannot lead. 
being in leadership, I just want to go back onto that leadership tip that we were talking about before. And, I, and I, we've had, to, as I said, on all the worlds, we always get together. And I, one of the biggest things is this. For us, we will always do what is best for the community, putting aside what our emotions are telling us. Because our job is to be leaders and not to be emotionally driven. Can, can you hear what I'm saying? Yes? Why? Because what we do as a leader, we have to be above reproach. We have to be the example for everybody. So for those that are becoming leaders or up and coming leaders, learn from these guys first. But my, old, my other thing too, I just want to clearly say, and I say this with love, for all the vets that are here, don't be passive with your leadership. You need to be there teaching the next generation. That's going to be very important. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. One of the differences that I also see is that they're not as involved in your personal stuff as how we used to be. We used to know what underwear you were wearing or if you haven't changed your underwear. Like, you know, I mean, we would be like, bro, we can smell you, man. Like, you know, but it's saying that we would be personal, like, we would be personal, and we didn't take offense to that. Why? Because we knew that the essence of Crump is family. Real family will fight each other, but they'll also fight for each other. Does that make sense? If you can't do that, then you are not supposed to be in leadership position. Because you will always put the community before you. That's what a good leader does. They make the sacrifice, they push forward, and they raise other people up. They don't tell what other people want to do. They tell them, let's do this together. That's what a good leader does. Is that understood? Is that okay? Are you getting hurt? No? Okay, I apologize, because this is how we talk. This is, we're, we're very just straight to the point. This, we're actually being like, nice right now. You've heard antagonized stuff, okay? Know where it came from. We are actually a lot worse. Okay, so if we have to say certain things, you, I'll tell you now, you will hear it from us. But the reason why we don't is because we also want to give you an opportunity to grow. Learn from your mistakes. But if you do not learn from your mistakes, it will never become wisdom. And what ends up happening, you just end up hurting yourself and then you hurt the community that you so-called love. Don't do that. Is that understood? Because if it comes to sh push comes to shove, the OGs will come back to regulate everything. Is that okay? Yes. When we mean regulate, I'm talking lock the doors. We're sessioning six hours, no one's getting out, and you're getting a beat down. Proper beat down, I'll lock you. And that's something you don't want to expect. I'm telling you, well, maybe. You know, you know. But um, yeah, just on that sort of final point, this is how serious we take it. And um, I'm very passionate, I'm equally as passionate as the, but I can't say any more than he's already addressed. Um, so I'm always going to back him up in, in this situation. So, and as, a, as, as an offset, I expect you to back these guys. So I'm giving you that. If they say something, I'm sure that I'll back that, whatever that is. So that's, that's, the, that's the sort of thing. But obviously come to us if you need, but trust your events as well. Um, and how they want to regulate that, I'll leave it up to them. They're filtered, but trust me, they can get very not filtered. <laughs> and lastly, as you develop to become a leader, it's okay to make mistakes. Being a leader, just you're just changing the position. Being a leader just means that you're more, like, you're just making more mista uh, mistakes in front of more people. That's what being a leader is. Because have you ever realized that every single time you do something good, everybody's like, yeah, they do that on normal. As soon as you do something wrong, that's the thing that pinpoint you for. That means you're an effective leader, okay? But don't take it to heart, become better. Is that cool? All right. Oh, um, just to add on to what they were saying, first of all, when they talk about this and uh, pointing at being antagonized, havoc is included. Havoc is one of the best in the room, um, recognizing Noyagin, he has a lot of knowledge and he's put in a lot of work for the people as well. Um, when they say, when the OGs come back and it'll be missing for you guys, it will be. If you guys think that, you guys see me as like a bully, like a, a real rough dude, I don't compare to these guys, for a lot of you guys. Um, I'm like, 
not even halfway there. And they will give it to you. Crazy. Yes, we've experienced that. And I don't cry. I think that's probably cry, but <laughs> not me, I never cry. You know what I'm saying? Um, but for the improvement part, um, I think there was an issue recently with the hierarchy, which is a new crumper coming in for the first battle pulling out someone a heavy hitter or someone crazy, uh, someone way above the level. Uh, you guys gotta understand there's a hierarchy. Like when we first started, we like and like I said, we were like Pokemon. We didn't battle until we got told to battle. We didn't call people out until they're like, you're ready to call somebody out. Call this person out. Call someone out that's in the same um, level as you. If you're a boy, call someone out that's boy. It's like, cool. Um, but we never overstepped and called out someone that was a heavy hitter of their OG unless we had our street cred. Street, street cred back then, or even now, was like the main thing. Like, if you came into the game now and you wanted to battle me, I'd be like, nah. <laughs> and, okay, I'll battle someone else first. Well, I'll probably build some nice. Anyways, thanks. <laughs> Thank you for listening to my tip. <laughs> 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 I definitely think that's thanks. important <laughs> point. Um, just kind of knowing your place in Crump as well. Um, you know, I, I've, I've seen it even just with the short amount of time that I've been in Crump compared to these people. Um, just respect will get you a long way in the Crump game compared to being a dickhead. Um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, just to be mindful of time, we're gonna move on to the integration to open styles. Um, Roxas and Chaos, what challenges and breakthroughs occurred when integrating Crump to open styles or other styles in general? I know we touched on this quite a bit, um, but maybe just some further insight on that. To be honest with you, like, we really battled mainly Crumpus. I think Antagonize would be the, and Rust would be the best to answer this one, to be honest. Uh, what challenges? So back then, in those days, uh, I think I believe the very first um, open style thing that happened here in Melbourne, maybe even Australia, was uh, City Sessions. Uh, I think 2010, yeah, the, the, some of the very first ones, and they did like a series throughout the year. Um, and the City Sessions back then, where the music was a lot weirder, which is funny enough the music that I'm into right now. Um, and you know, these are like you know, some of the most, you know, SoundCloud, like very, very deep SoundCloud, underground type shit. Um, stuff that, you know, you only hear when you go to like UK or something, you know, if you, yeah. Um, so, uh, challenges for me, um, my, with my experiences, I had to learn how to, that, how to make sure that I'm not in a crumb session, or I'm not in a crumb battle, you know, so, if there's a lot of the time from us stay way behind here, but in an all-style setting, you gotta be in the middle so people can see you. You, know? you gotta use your space, which is a lot of you guys know this. This is like all basic stuff. Um, but back then, I didn't know that. You know, I had to go ask Efren, you know, or some of the Jigsaw sneakers guys for feedback, um, and that's the number one feedback I got. That's number, and I still use that feedback to this day. Um, in terms of like. Like with me, like, uh, and I know, and I hear it, and I, I feel you as promise that you guys get frustrated when you guys don't get prop music in your rounds. Who cares, bro? <laughs> None of us got it, bro. Like, who, what makes you so special? If you're good, you're good. You came in to battle, yeah? Like, it's to prove how good you are. And this not on some ego stuff. This is just real. Just don't cry about it at all. Little antagonist is like stop crying about it. Like even Sharon and now is like, yeah, stop crying about it. You know, like, it is what it is, bro. Like you got you got a disco, you got a disco track. Oh, don't cry about it, bro. Exactly. You're welcome. Because I'll play that disco track. <laughs> um, but yeah, so you know, like it's it's, it's it is what it is. Because to me. I don't eat, actually don't like it. For example, if me and Russell were in an all-styles team and, and whoever's DJing playing the crumb track, 
Uh, I'll be like, ah, it is a waste of time. We could have just done this outside. You know? We could have just done this on Tuesday. You know what I mean? Like, you know, we we would love it if you know if something else random gets played. You know, because yeah, in terms of what, the reason why I'm saying that is because it's when you do an all styles thing, it's a challenge. It's like you gotta make sure you you really know how to dance as a combo. Don't just do your hat tricks and your shoe tricks and your <laughs> I mean, you know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? Like, you gotta really show how to dance and how and how much you enjoy that. The best person to use to watch is David over there. You know, he's like Ooh, one, of the best, one of the best dancers in the world, um, <laughs> you know? in the universe. He's one of the best dancers in the Milky Way galaxy. He's got a six pack. The best six back in the Milky Way galaxy. Um, so I think before that, and I think where Omar was alluding to, it was truly we'll battling each other. But I think there was an actual point in um, in sort of our acceptance of the open style movement, and this is probably because of Homer's god brother, our sort of queer farmer. So um, I'll just share this story with you. It was something crazy, which is something really benign in terms of how we see things, and it's related to calling people people out, right? In terms of battles. Um, story went, we did a performance in Clayton um, for some youth event of some sort. Obviously, you're hungry, you go to bankers or you pay your seat. Anyways, um, I'll just give you some concepts. So, um, Blitz, um, you know, I'm going to you know, just tell you who this person is. So Blitz himself is a medical doctor, so this is the type of people that we have in the community. So, this is a guy that was going through studies and, you know, getting into his GMATs or whatever you want to call it, entry level, or I think he was a graduate at the time. Anyways, he had a problem or something. We said on the Crum, uh, Oscrum forum, you remember that forum? Yeah, the Oscrum forums. Um, and he was like, where are you guys? I need you to stay there. Me and Homer were like, okay, why? You said something to stay there. All right, I think we're gonna do it. We'll cool. Said it to him, I'm like, I'm feeling it. You can have both of us. Mama, right, um, God bless his soul. He was like, hey, call his wife and said, hey babe, I'm gonna be like, four hours late. Why do? It's already 11 p.m. Right? He's like, why is that? He goes, these guys want to battle on the streets like right now. And then we're like, so what? It's a battle, like, put music on, whatever. And then he tells us his story and he goes, you know how difficult it is to get people to battle? Get the line out, get all this sort of stuff. He needs like a plan in this little street battle. But you guys are doing this right now. Ever since he witnessed me and Homer battle, but since the two of one, like proper two of one, I think Blitz held his own. I think in that in that moment he got some rounds, we got some rounds, but in the end of it, Lama was so sort of like, and he was like, who won? Like, what happened? So are you guys gonna go again or what was the situation? He told everybody in the Oz Boy forum. That's when we got accepted to the open all stars. So if Lama said something, everyone was like, yeah, okay. He was legit. So that's it's almost like we have to prove it just based on our own essence. And then these guys paved the way into the actual style itself. So that was the backstory of how we entered into it, because of people like Lama Rock. Falcon, you know, um, Fresh Sox crew, and KO crew, and they participated actively in our sessions. B Boy Tofu used to crumb and B Boy, and I remember he used B Boy and Top Rock, and he'd be like, I have no idea I felt this way, but he was B Boy and two crumb music. And then, unfortunately, the session sort of moved on, and everyone sort of, and then, but it was because of that pivotal moment. Lama was our advocator. Someone said, talk shit about us, Lama feels it. Don't talk about these guys, these guys are the shit. These guys aren't just a phase, these guys aren't your, your jerkers and what other stuff that you come across, right? These guys are legit. So curious to Lama, you gotta watch this, so I'll always remember that, that, that moment. Amelia. Amelia. And now he's still actively doing it, so curious to him. Um, Dovetail into Kians, all the technical stuff, that's because of people like Lama, helping us break through into the scene, and then you have curry scene and stuff. That's another thing. To add to, to, add to a, another uh, All Stars event that happened, um, it, Lama called it BBA. So Lama made this event where he, I think, if you made it through, oh no, if you entered, um, and back in those days, not many people entered All Stars battle. So if you entered, you have to provide three tracks of your style, um, and then he'll play it. He'll play them randomly for you when you get called up. So. That was his way of integrating, you know, all stars. Because at the time, because nowadays, I feel like all stars itself, or open stars, have kind of established itself as whatever it is. Yeah. Um, 
you know, as as judge as judges of you know of if certain events, we don't really have a particular um, set of criteria when it comes to open styles, other than I suppose musicality, rapper style, I guess. Um, and obviously, we know even if we don't know you, we know when someone's being legit. You know, if someone's really locking or someone's really pumping or someone's really you know house you know doing house or whatever whatever the stuff may be. You know, so we can just tell, like, you know, that saying, real recognize real, it's real. <laughs> um, and if you don't recognize it, then, you know, maybe you still got to build yourself up a little bit. So, yeah, so that's, I think, with that question, yeah, I think I answered that, bro. Um, yeah. It's not fair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. 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 Um, so just to be like mindful of time, we're actually going to open it to the audience. Um, so, if anyone has a question, just raise your hand and I'll bring the mic to you. Oh, we'll nah, you can do it. Oh. Nah, you can do it. I'm good. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying. say it out loud. <laughs> yeah, we, we can do it. Yeah, if anything. So, if you have a question, raise your hand and yeah. Yeah, that's crazy, guys. Let them cook a little. This is a safe space, so speak your mind and we'll try to answer it our best. Mary? Without the mic? Yeah, you can do it without the mic. Um, so, Roxas, you were saying before that something that can be improved is that um, people should learn, uh, well, learn how to crawl for money, basically. Um, what would you guys say are some of the situations that you have witnessed in the scene where something like that has taken place? And I guess also, furthermore, when did you have to step in and kind of humble and teach people? Um, and this is something that I have to counsel with Omar um, about this off topic. Um, I'm going to, as the American say, plead the fifth. So I'm going to take it on notice. There is a particular reason why I'm doing that. And I want to reserve this for particular people. Um, not because I don't have an opinion on it. It's just when I try to speak on something, it needs to be sort of Sure. It's got to be somewhat factual. So I need to get my ducks in a row if I can really say that. But this, the interjections what I've seen, they're sort of superficial stuff. Like, okay, this is yeah, it's a little too much. I need to, that's not, that's not what I'm talking about. It's something else. So if you don't mind, I want to just keep that. If you want to, you know, anything to say on that or not. Based on what you've observed. Can you say it again? Again. No. Um, basically, can you provide when you needed to step in when people were jumping the gun before they could, like, come into that position? That was a question, more or less? Yeah. yeah that's, that's, that's. <laughs> I'm going to jail, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I told you, I was just doing this shit work. Uh, this will be me. <laughs> um, Can I be very real with you guys? Yeah. Okay. Beef. If you don't know how to settle your beefs, why are you in this dance? The whole purpose of Crump is to dance your differences and then resolve it. If you don't know how to resolve it, there's an issue. Because the whole point of the dance is to let everything out. And then you make friends. You know, I don't mean to preach on you, but in my good book it says, a brother is born out of adversary. You know how many times us and everybody else had arguments and almost like full on like it's, I, I'm just gonna put this all out there, I don't care because I can't, right? But we've had big issues, like big, big issues. I've had stuff stolen from me, right? But I still hug those people today. I've had things said about me, but I still show love to everybody today. Why? Because Crump is bigger than me. It's about the community. It's about the people. And that's one thing I really want to just tell every single one of you. Beef is okay, it's natural, it's a normal thing to do. But learn to resolve it. Learn to be adults. Because outside of that, 
There's a big world out there. If you don't know how to deal with it in this little fish pond, you're not going to deal with it outside. Does that make sense? And that's why it's so important because the whole purpose of Crump is to deal with your outlet. People come to the session to let go, not to hold on and harbor and take back. If you're like, if you're just the way that I see it, if you're chucking out everything, but then you're like, you know what? I'm gonna take that back and I'm gonna hold on to this. You're, you're missing the whole point of this dance. You're missing it. For for us, Crump has been a very very big part of our lives. For us, we've seen our boys become fathers. We see their children. We see, we've gone through highs and lows with each other. A little beef should not separate family. Every single one of you are family because your common ground is the love of crumb. Act like it. If you cannot handle here, you cannot represent Burn City anywhere else. Because in Burn City, we deal with our problems internally first. And then if it comes to the point where we have to speak to you, we will speak to you. And one thing I want you to understand, when the leaders, if they speak to you, I want you to listen to understand, don't listen to respond. You will never learn if you always try to speak and to defend yourself. That's what makes a good leader. Learning to understand that, hey, maybe there's something that I need to do in order to become better because I don't have it all together. That's what Crump is. That's what Burn City is. And I say this with love to every single one of you. Do not take away the heart of Burn City. Do not do that. I'm saying this as an OG. I'm saying it as a, as a brother to you guys. Don't, as a big brother, don't do that. Don't allow that to. That's what separates us from every other state. Did you know that? Every other state beefs with each other. But it's only Burn City that always mediated for every other state. I don't know if you know that, but that's the reality. So if you're going to change it, if you're going to switch it, you will hear from us directly. Because that's the heart of Burn City. That's who we are. And that's the legacy we want every single one of you to carry, that fire that we want you to carry. Learn to love one another. Hear what I'm saying? You will always have differences. That's a, that's a normal thing. But it doesn't cost you anything to just love on somebody. Just to say, I'm sorry if you need to say sorry. Why are you going to allow your pride to get in the way? You're going to allow these other small things to get in the way and then all of a sudden there's going to be all this division that's going to happen. What for? How does that benefit the crumb community? It doesn't. Does anyone have any objections? Does everybody understand? I'm going to let that pass the pause, you know that. Say something. Wait. Ooh, I feel that. That's great. I'm gonna take that one. <laughs> Sorry, it's a rule in the mood, but you know, hey. But I think yeah, it, it's 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 everything I said is is exactly how I feel. He's expressed it a lot better than I could. I think because I resist um, and I reserve the right. And it's just just based on you know what I've learned in my past. And I think um, something should be regulated outside of the comp style. And I think for the most part, all of us can say that looks a little bit too personal. So. Keep each other accountable. If you see that and it's encroaching into the therapies, like that's that natural um, intrinsic feeling where it's like, oh, I think this is going beyond what we're thinking with, with dancing. Interject, why not? Be the respect if you can, because we can't be in every session, right? So you've got to hold yourself to account as well. And I'm telling you, growing up, like you know, now, only like 20 years ago, we're coming into our like, 40s now, right? Like, coming into our 40s, and now it's sort of like, <laughs> so coming into our sort of you know forties into sort of our you know um, careers and whatnot, this stuff isn't worth it. Like a little piece that you know tarnish over something a difference of opinion, and then you're like, is that it? Like just because of that, I lost twenty years, fifteen years, five years, three years of a relationship with somebody. This is very special. Not a lot of people 
And this is another one thing that I actually learned. This is from the firm. So our firm has 10,000 people. They always tell me, outside of the firm, who do you have? They don't have this. I'm talking as a majority, right? And they always go, oh, it's great that you can do dancing with the boys and you know, with the community. We have nothing like that. We just have a corporate life. So it's actually, they actually look at us and go, hey, and I'll tell you the reason why I got into things like Big Four and all this sort of stuff is because of Crump. I was able to resonate that lessons about how we deal with conflicts. People talk about, you know, the old interview question, tell me a time when you get into a disagreement and how did you resolve it, or something to that effect. Everyone's heard it, right? My number one answer was straight crump. The only thing that I said was some business, but it wasn't, it was purely crump, about how we negotiated in battles. So my, my thinking process was that, and I thought, you know what, if I can live this, I'll teach these guys it, right? But if I get into a, a proper beef with someone like Russell, and we've known him for a long time now, I think he are too, I'm like, man, for beefing with whatever it is, it's not worth it. I've built a relationship with the guys, the brothers. I've seen Gian get, he's only just getting started as well with the arts, with DJ and everything in our He wins, I win, right? If I win, he wins. Yes. And this is what we're supposed to be up with. There's no point about this session is bad, this session is bad. Man, we were happy to dance with BC with our last dollar. And we'll stay overnight if we have to. Because we couldn't get back. We couldn't get back. <laughs> That's why we're next train. And this is the thing, and this, this is the, the actual essence of what we mean to do. And like Jan said before, um, interstate has come to Melbourne to reset. They go beef, they come here, reset. Perfect, I'm sorry, I want you to shut down and manifest. They beef, 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 come to here and go, oh man, we're actually in the wrong. Go back, what's all gravy? They beef, beef, come back here. And I'll, I'll probably say that all of Australia come here just to, just to cleanse, to mediate, to cleanse. And you know, most of the time it's not even active counsel. It's not like they're going, you're a rocks, you're a rough, what are we what are we doing wrong? It's because of just our camaraderie with each other, like, man, we should be doing that. We should be replicating that. That's the exemplar. we I don't know what we're on. So that's what we need to continue. I'm going to admit we're going down a deviated path, but we can save it. We're not there yet. But I think just be more like be cognizant that this style is fleeting. It's so much more to it than it is. Don't ruin your relationship, it's not worth it. I'm telling you it's not worth it. Because it's all I have. Right now, even with my high school friends, I've closed my circles. These are my first circles, along with only a very small fraction. And it used to be a typical buddy boy, 50 people in the crew, go clubbing every weekend, whatever it is. And I'm like, this is no value. The crumb is actually taking on the set, the, 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 the right path. I don't know what's like, bro, you've got to start doing this. Blitz would say, hey, bro, you're, you're falling out in the what are you doing? Yeah, where I'm at now, I never wanted to go to these accountable to each other. We're accountable, right? Responsible and transparent. To when Russ was, um, if, I, if, I, if I may, when he was struggling to find a job, I'm like, you know what, I'm going to go do that course in that course in the course that we did. Dude, I was with him. And I'm a guy who got a degree, right? I'm like, you know what, maybe I need something to learn. And it benefited me. So that experience from the course and on, I apply this into management consulting, every like, consulting what I want to executives. Because of someone like him, so I back him. So this is what I, I'm trying to address that. We, if we meet together, this is the heart of the city. Nothing else, you know, really matters. So support each other. I'm not telling you to go feeding right now. Regulate your feelings. Just get it, let it pass. But just don't hold on to that age. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. If one part of the body hurts, the whole body hurts. Like my foot, that hurts. I got crutches, but I can feel it. Does that make sense? So just fix it up. Yeah, it's, it's, to be honest with you, just admitting you're wrong or saying sorry or forgiving, that's usually the most hardest. It's easy to say, but hardest thing to do. You know, but I can promise you, things can only get better from there. Is that cool? Anyone else? Any more questions from the audience? Anything? Of course. Yeah. You don't know, you don't know Sydney and Perth and all these other, they are growing. 
And I don't want Melbourne to stop growing as well. And what I'm trying to say is that the reason why Melbourne can grow is if we have a strong leadership. And I think starting from here is that we start establishing proper leadership, proper growth to really start moving forward as a whole community. And, um, <coughs> sorry, my voice is like whack right now. <laughs> That's it, it's out. And what I'm trying to say is us as vets, we're going to submit to these guys and whatever they tell us, we will regulate as well as a whole community. And for me, as like, you know, being part of the vets, I'm to be honest, I wasn't really active until 2018. But I said to some of the people that, you know, you guys know me, I wanted to show up first before I even have a voice in saying something in the community. So for, so for me personally, as one of the vets, expect to see me more and just pour my knowledge and pour my love out onto you guys because I, from here on, I do see Crump, uh, Brent City Crump growing even more than what it did in the past. Um, I believe the OGs would want to see us succeed better than they succeeded in their time. And they had it harder than us, but we have everything that we need right now. So what is to stop us from growing than what we have in this room? I believe probably next year we can fill this room probably that next room behind us one day. And that is something that I would love to see. And it just goes to, um, I don't know where I'm going with this, I had a lot in my head. But with, with what the OG is saying, we have to love one another. We have to push past our differences and push together as a movement. Burns City has always been that state that always had unity. Like other states looked at us like, hey, how did you do this? How are you guys getting along so well? We're just Burns City, man. That's how we roll. It doesn't matter. We beef. I've seen people fight in car parks and still be best friends after. It's crazy. Like, I've, like the M's. The M's beef with every single one. But we're all still brothers at the end of the day and family. And we need to push together. We need to push past our differences. And we need to establish ourselves. You know, we'll keep each other accountable. You know what? Because I believe maybe we haven't been the best leaders in the Burn City. And maybe that's why things have gotten the way that it's gotten. And now we're addressing things, certain things, um, now because, you know, it's time to grow. It's time to stop hurting at one another. And it's time to, you know, stop walking around eggshells. <laughs> Let's be real. And we love Crump too much. I love Crump too much. I met my best friends through Crump. I met my wife through Crump. How crazy is that? <laughs> yeah. And it's the same thing that I want everyone, each and every single one of you to experience in this crime scene. And I don't want you know, yes there's negative, but I tell you right now, there is more positive in this scene to happen. So I don't know where I'm going with that, but all I'm saying is that let's move forward and I believe there is so much growth to happen in this Burn City crime community. And it's us today, all right? Cool. Thank you, Navid. Um, any more questions from the audience? Raise your hand. Mix. Oh, mix. Hello. Um, do you mention um, the idea of street uh, credibility? So my question is, what's, what, uh, what, what qualifies someone to be a big homie, judge, or crown teacher? Another preaching. All right. <laughs> so, what qualifies for a big army? Is that what you're saying? Big army, judge, judge, judge. Teacher. teacher. Okay. First and foremost, you have to study the dance. You have to know everything about it first. And secondly, to be straight out with you, your skill level has to represent. Because you can't teach what you don't have, right? So if, if you don't, if you can't battle and beat people, it's hard to push that crump teaching to somebody else. But it goes beyond that actually, because remember, your crump is just only as good as your, your personal character and your integrity. The only reason why you guys listen to us is not just because of what we did, but it's actually who, who we are, you know? Um, and in going beyond crumb. 
And, and that's going to be important as well for a, a big homie and a leader. Because um, these are qualities that they have to possess. It's, it's not an option. It's needed. Because whatever you have is only going to flow to everybody else. So if you want the next generation to be great leaders, then you become a great leader yourself. Be the example to whoever you're going to teach. But, like, to be honest, I, I was the first one to teach Crump in a dance school at Melbourne Music Academy. And then when I stopped, I got uh, Roxas here to do it, and then I, some of the other boys ended up doing it. And, but the only reason why I got to teach is because we put the hard work in first. We didn't just be like, hey, I went to a session, now I'm going to go teach Crump. Hey, I, I've gone to a session, now I'm going to be a big homie. Do you get what I mean? Because the truth is, you're only after a title. You're not willing to go through the process. The most beneficial, the most, the biggest thing you'll ever find is never the ending. It's always the journey. That's what will solidify you as a, like a genuine vet, OG, you know, whatever it may be. That's what will qualify you as a big homie. Because remember, look at it this way. A big homie is where someone looks up to them. Can I ask you, if you honestly looked at yourself in the mirror, can you look up to yourself? Would you be happy with someone looking up to you? Because if not, then you're not ready. You're not ready. And that's the honest truth. Hear what I'm saying. There's always a process for leadership. As a pastor, okay, so I'm a lead pastor, okay, my senior pastor allowed me to make all my mistakes. And he just allowed me. And he, but you know how much crap I got from it? Because I'm, I'm doing it, I'm, I'm leading people. These are people's lives, right? But one thing that I told them, and I told my, my pastoral staff was this, you need to correct me every single time. Because one of the things that I do know is this, some people who want to be in leadership don't like to be corrected. Can I tell you, you will, your, your leadership span will be very, very short. A good leader knows how to be corrected so they can become a better leader. My pastor would tell me everything wrong with me and it hurt. It hurt. But you know what I said to him? Keep it coming. Because if you never correct me on what I did wrong and I fail, that's your fault. But if you correct me and I listen and it goes forward, and I, and I learn that that's because of you. I, I, I learned my, you know, I'm learning what's, what it means to be a leader. And then I, I think Liz, that's what qualifies you to be a big homie and, and a leader in the Crumb community. Here in my heart, there's a percentage of influence, of charisma, and all that other things. But can I say to you one thing? Talent can only go so far. It is your character that will stand with everything else. It's only your character that will, will be able to stand. When people turn around, when people, when you are not in the room and people talk behind your back, there will be people that will still stand for you because they know the character that you are. That's what makes a good leader. I'm not saying leadership is perfect. No one is. We've stuff our peeps. But we'd rather tell you all our mistakes so you guys don't have to do it. But learn from your mistakes. And be teachable, be malleable. Don't be stuck in your ways. Because if I was always just stuck in my ways, I'd never be the leader that I am today. And can I just say to you, all the experiences that you experience in life to help you develop to become that. Not every good thing that happens to you is, is only the reason why you're a good leader. A lot of the times, bad things have to happen to you so you will understand why now, okay, I need to flip it and do it this way to become a better leader. It's important. You know the truth is this? A lot of you guys won't realize, let's be honest, we don't all like each other. I don't like Russell, right? But this is the thing, I love him, right? But this is the thing, sometimes. But this is the thing, can I just say to you, I want you to take this, if there's anything they're gonna take, people will rub you up the wrong way. They're gonna be like sandpaper, they're gonna rub you up the wrong way. But at the end of the day, you'll become more refined, and you'll become more smoother. And that will help you in getting your edges to be 
cut down. Because not every single one of you is a perfect masterpiece. A lot of you still need to be trimmed down. Is, is that cool? Does that help you answer? answer? Yeah. Um, I think with that, with we'll touching on what just Kirsch just said, um, also be real with yourself. If you don't think you're ready, you're not ready. Like, for me, I didn't, you guys all know me, I, I barely take on any levels. And that's because, like what uh, Kirsch just said, when I looked at myself in the mirror, I didn't want people to walk up to me. That was just me being real. Because I wasn't in um, doing, you know, I wasn't um, coming in and showing, putting in the work. So I was like, why am I the leader? Even though everybody else was saying, you're a great leader. You're the leader for Ben's to come. These guys were saying, I'm ready to be a leader. But for me, I was just like, no, nah, man. Like, why? I don't want people to look up to me. Uh, so just be real with yourself as well. Um, yeah, just be honest. Be honest with you, everybody else around you, and yeah. Mm. <laughs> just to add as well, um, <clears throat> I feel like leadership, a lot of people aim for leadership, and it's probably like, there's some of you guys here, um, especially the younger ones, that want to be leaders of some sort in the future whether it's in dance or in a big company or whatever the case may be. But the thing with leadership is, I feel like it's not something that people should be aiming for. It's actually a burden. You know, being a leader, like having, you know, having to lead something. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a burden that, what I was saying earlier, that I was like, for a long time, I wanted to just stop doing what I do because, you know, I, I just wanted to dance. I just wanted to be one of the dancers. Why do I always have to organize something, even if it's small, you know? So that's why I'm so thankful these days that there's so many different sessions, you know, we got the food spray one, Alana over there, M's, uh, Mind of a Mutant, doing the thing ever since, even when you guys were zero sessions, you know? Um, in saying that, I know there's probably other sessions that you guys do that we don't know about. That's fine too, like, you know? Like, at the end of the day, it's, if you want to vibe with your fam, with your, just your fam, or just with your friends, or, you know, your close, Circle, go for it. But yeah, the thing with leadership, or you know, if you, as a big homie, you gotta be a leader as well. Even though, even if you're just leading two or three people in that sense, so like, it's not something that you know, it's not something that should be glorified. It's you know, when when it gets real, when she is the fan, what are you gonna do? You know what I mean? Like this with me, every time something something like that happens, I'm like, ah, oh, shit. The hell am I gonna do next? You know, right? how do I solve this? But you know, things always pan out, I guess. Um, yeah, just to add to that. Any more questions? You sure? I want to know about the definition of kingdom radically uplifted in mighty ways. I'll put in our definition of what is kingdom, what is radically or uplifted and mighty and crazy. Because for some people, I say like some people dance because of the religious reason. Mm -hmm. For some people, they dance because they want to feel the importance of it or other preferences. Yeah, that's something that I expect. But I don't know what else. Mm -hmm. um, I'll answer it. In. So, so that definition, um, so Crump altogether, um, in, you know, in the history of Crump, there's always been the spiritual side, and then there's some people that uh, that don't really do that for that purpose. Yeah, um, and I feel like in this day and age, you gotta be really open. You can't just you know. There's a there's a time where everyone you know there's some certain groups of people that were close-minded. You know, they were just like, it's just Christ up. If you're not with us, you're. But if it's not dishing out anything entire or anything bad. Eventually, everyone's gonna be quiet, and you know, and I've, I've done it. We all go through it, you know. It doesn't mean that you're bad for anything, um, especially if you're new. Don't expect a crazy hype, you know. Because sometimes there's some people they just get hyped because there's just something about the way they position their body this way that people, that people just fully, you know, feel or understand. So that's just another, uh, mean, uh, another explanation of that acronym. Um, but in a praise point of view, I don't know. <laughs> Anyone else?
All right, so from a Christian point of view, the kingdom, because well, it is biblical for our, in a sense for us, because uh, we receive it as God's kingdom. So there has to be, the, the kingdom is two words, king and dom, which is dominion. Yeah? So there's a king and there's a dominion. And when we dance, we're taking dominion for God. Like that's pretty much what we're trying to do, right? Uh, radically, obviously, like, um, because it's 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 crazy when you see it that way. It's 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 a radical movement of um, you know and um, and uplifting is uh, you know because for us as as a pastor when we uplift prayers we up, you know I lift our praises that's that's it's it's an upward motion yeah and then my praise and because one thing you'll hear if you look at the history they'll say ah oh, King David was the first conqueror because it says he danced with all his might before the Lord. Like, you know, so that's where they kind of uh, put that together. And like, but for me, uh, you know, I like what they said, because the truth is, um, I think they misconstrued that. And they, instead of bringing people together, they push people away, which is the total opposite of what Christianity is. Because I'm, I'm a big believer in not Bible bashing people. My thing is this, I'd rather show you the love of God first than rather try to preach at you. Because I can't, you know, there's no point. Now, in saying that, uh, I hope that answers your, your thing. And whatever you do it for, just do it but respect the culture at the end of the day. Okay? Um, can I just add one more thing? One thing that I've noticed, um, and this may be a touchy thing for everybody. Um, Giran said it before. If we don't hype you up, can I just say, don't be offended? But I want to say this to you, and I want to make it clear. You need to earn your hype. Hype is not given to you just because you walked into the circle. A cat could walk into the circle. They're not going to get the hype. Yeah, it's a separate thing. Right? Yeah. Right? But did you hear what I'm saying? Because the whole point of when you walk up, when you come into the circle and you're here, you're, you're, you're introducing yourself, right? You are building it up. Allow that to happen. Earn your stripes. When I, when we, before when I was training with Beast, that's one of the things he always told us. You're not going to get hyped until you do something buck. Then and only then, when we hear a woo, because I did a, I did a move, bang, and then like, ooh, then I'm like, okay, I earn a jab, I earn the stomp, but I only earn one until I hear it hype up more and more. See, this will help you with your crump to let it go on a meter when you should start going. Because I know some of you just start jumping and start going, and then halfway you're like, I don't know what I'm doing. Why? Because there's no structure to your dance. And another thing, I'm just gonna put it all out there now, right? Because we're going at it. Dance. Some of you just look angry. Dance on beat. Be musical. Groove. If you're not doing those things, you're not cropping actually. You're just doing training. But to actually dance and groove and allow your body to move you, the music to move you, that's crump. That's dancing. Crump is a dance, so dance. Is that cool? Okay, that's all we have time for tonight. I just want to say thank you to everyone on the panel. Big round of applause for you guys. Um, this isn't something that we you know, get to do often, so please take it, take what they said, learn from it, grow from it, and ask questions one-on-one -on -one if you really need to. Um, and thank you guys for coming and supporting this. Um, huge shout out to you guys. Um, on behalf of all my reunion, Shiona and Troy and myself, thank you for supporting us. We really appreciate it. Thank you.